Hi, I'm John Miglosh, and we're going to continue in our series, Making Money with Data, talking about CRM. If you remember in our last talk, we said that maybe CRM, Customer Relationship Management, isn't really the best name because, first of all, your customers don't think of it as a relationship. In fact, I was studying this topic a little bit, and they said the number one reason people switch from one company to another is customer service. Okay, and if you are big into CRM, you should have great customer service, but customers don't think of it as a relationship. If they don't get their problems solved, they're not interested. Okay, and, and management, well, I did check with my wife after the last session, and she said that she would keep the flowers and she would appreciate them, but she agreed <laughs> you don't manage relationships, you nurture relationships. Okay, so customer relationship management. Now, what could possibly be the pitfalls in that? Well, I remember watching one of our telemarketers when our CRM system was first implemented, and this was before we called it that, this was back in the early 80s. And she brought up a customer and she would look at all the stuff that they bought and she would look at the categories that they bought in, what they bought last year, year to date, what they bought this year, year to date. She'd read the, the salesman's comments, she'd read her last comments, she'd get all set and she'd hit the button and dial and the line would be busy or there would be no answer. So then she'd go to the next customer that was on her docket for the day and she'd go through the same process. We took our calls per hour from around 20 down to about well, actually, if you look at the conversations, down about six. And that's not uncommon in a, in a highly technical CRM environment. And so um, one of the big problems that you run into with a CRM system is data. I saw people talking about not having enough data. Some CRM systems are built in the cloud. They don't connect up with who bought what. And so you have all kinds of information about your last call and your last contact, but you don't know what they bought. You don't know how much money they've spent or whether they stopped spending or, or anything whatsoever. And so one of the co concerns was, is that connected? But an even bigger concern, and this was almost comical, this is from CRM.com, uh, CRM Magazine. And they said, when we first started our CRM, the people who put the data in weren't the people that benefited from the data. And so a lot of the data was a little misguided. Then they got more data. They started drink, dragging in the transactions. Then they got more data. They started tracking interactions on the website and and because the customers would log in as, as members or as club members or that sort of thing. And so they would, they would get comments. They would get interactions. They would get this huge host of information. So then they decided that maybe what they should do was analytics and business intelligence to feed to the telemarketer or to the field salesperson. And they said, but they, they, had, they were getting to have so much data that they didn't have time to do any of that. And so now they just got this huge pile of data that they can't make heads or tails out of. So two problems with data. One is too little data. It doesn't connect up with your main transactions. Second problem, too much data. We can't make sense of it all because it's just, we're getting inundated with it. You know, we get every tweet from every customer that we'd ever like to have. Is one of the main complaints by people involved with CRM is, it doesn't help me do my job. I can't make calls faster. I can't make my minimum quota, okay? So the next level of challenges is, two is knowledge. And one of the most important things, remember that when we talked about CRM last time, we talked about how the most important thing in CRM is not necessarily predicting customer behavior, that that may be nearly impossible. But it would be good to, to spend more marketing dollars on the customers that are spending more with you than to spend it equally or to spend it on some algorithm of prediction. And so this one is particularly problematic. Very few CRM systems attempt it, but when they attempt it, they generally fail, okay? So that brings us to our third problem or challenge with CRM, and that is purpose. And again, I got this from an article, CRM Magazine. I'll put the link in on the YouTube. Um, what is the purpose? What are you trying to achieve? 
I contend last time that if you're trying to predict consumer behavior, if you're trying to predict business to business behavior, you will fail. Not because you're not any good at it, although that may also be the case, but primarily because life just doesn't work like that. We, we, John, work, Wood, John Worth at Woodworker Supply said, once a woodworker, always a woodworker, but sometimes you have money. Okay, you are not gonna model when the guy just got his retirement bonus or whatever, or inheritance from his grandmother. You're not gonna model that. You don't know when that happened. You know, Eric Goodwill at Bullock and Jones said to me, we got an order for $50,000 from a guy. He just got a big promotion with one of the major car manufacturers. He decided to just redo his whole wardrobe. You're not gonna predict that, okay? But as George Mosier said from National Business Furniture, all my friends are getting on this video. He said, if we get a $50,000 order, we might wanna rent that list a few more times. And that is the mo most fundamental principle here. What is the purpose of your CRM? If your purpose is to predict the future, fail. Your purpose should be to reward, to thank, to keep in touch, to listen to the needs of your best customers. And if it does that, then you're on the right track. I'm John Miglosh, have fun with your data.